Today we're going to be reacting to a video that I posted on my Instagram and TikTok that went viral. This is the reality of driving in the UK and why I always say about how amazing it is driving in Europe. The lane discipline. Now some pretty difficult and awful things have happened in my lifetime, not to mention the countless wars, the fact that F1 has basically now become completely corrupt. But worst of all has to be the state of Britain's roads. They're not just overcrowded and congested, but apparently they're full to capacity with morons. Now sweeping statements and joking aside, I must just point out that I don't take myself particularly seriously. And in fact, I'd be the first person to put my hands up and tell you that I'm not the perfect driver. Far from it, in fact. However, I'm seeing something so regularly now on Britain's roads that people are doing wrong that I had to just make this video about it. This is the reality of driving in the UK and why I always say about how amazing it is driving in Europe. The lane discipline. I'm doing exactly 70 miles an hour in lane one, which should be the slow lane. Yet, as you can see, I'm passing traffic in lane two, three, and four, all going slower. Lane one is the new lane four. It's a complete mess. This is why I hate driving on the UK motorways. And this is the M1, it's not even the worst. Okay, so this video has been viewed half a million times on Instagram alone. It's also been shared on Facebook and TikTok and the main consensus that I can ascertain from the comments, and no I'm not going to say that everyone agrees with me, that is not at all the case, and rightly so, but the main consensus I'm getting is just confusion. Now as far as I'm aware, confusion in and of itself is a problem because in an ideal world you want every single person using our roads to be, well, on the same page. But this whole lane hogging issue seems to be something that confuses people and I believe is becoming a lot more common. Now I'm not just making this video to have a rant, although that always does feel very good. Us Brits love to have a rant, let's face it. But I actually have a theory that lane hogging is more of a problem than just a minor annoyance on the road as I believe that all of the statistics point towards the fact that it actually causes a lot of congestion and potentially accidents on our roads. This is the reality of driving in the UK and why I always say about how amazing it is driving in Europe. Full context, I'm wearing those gloves because this was filmed on around the, I don't know, 27th of December, just after Christmas, we were on our way to visit some other family and Katie, my fiance, who was filming the video, had just bought me these driving gloves and so obviously I was wearing them, but I have to admit, I, I still wear them now. I actually, I love them. The lane discipline. I'm doing exactly 70 miles an hour in lane one, which... So as you can see there from this video, we're on the M1, which is one of the arterial roads of Britain, if you don't know. It basically just goes up like that through England. And this part of the M1, it does vary, but this part is four lanes. And you can see that there's essentially a car parallel in each lane, pretty much the whole way through this video and they're all doing different speeds. And what's more noticeable is that actually they're pretty much going slower the further out to the right you go in. And that's not how it's supposed to be. I'm driving at 70 miles per hour on cruise control and have been doing for a number of miles. In fact, that's what prompted me to ask Katie to just film what was going on because this had been going on for a while. I've been sat at 70 exactly indicated on the speedo, so probably more like 67, 68 in actual speed. And I was essentially passing people to my right who were going slower. All the while, and as you can see from this video still, the road in front of me, i.e. lane one in front of me, was completely clear as far as the eye could see. The idea behind a road with multiple lanes, you're supposed to keep left unless overtaking. It's really as simple as that. And I do say slow lane in this video, but this is me saying so-called slow lane. I know it's not actually the slow lane, and each lane has the speed limit of 70 miles per hour. It does not differ. The only thing on that is that you might find vehicles with limited speed, such as articulated lorries with a 56 miles per hour limiter, or cars towing caravans, or certain vans that are limited to 60 or 62 miles per hour. They are notoriously, and they should be really, using lane one and potentially that's where it gets its slow lane nickname from. But no, in actual fact, all of the lanes have a speed limit of 70 miles per hour. And the idea being then that essentially you're driving in lane one unless you need to be anywhere else. And the only theoretical reason you would ever need to be anywhere else is, well, I suppose 
if a lane is closed or if you are overtaking. So why is it a problem then when people aren't keeping left and they're in lane three when they could be in lane one or two, et cetera, et cetera? Well, the problem with it is being that if you take a piece of tarmac, i.e. the M1 in this case, it's got four lanes and each lane therefore represents 25% of the road's capacity. If you're in lane three and there's cars coming up behind you and that car's going faster than you and it's actually traveling lane one or lane two, it's then gonna have to go around you into lane four to do a legal overtake and therefore basically use 100% of the road's capacity just getting across and around you. If you had been traveling in lane one and this car coming up behind you is in lane one, it would only have to use 50% of the road's capacity, i.e. using lane one and then lane two to get past you before moving back in. That's a very simple way of looking at it. By lane hogging, you're causing other people essentially to use up more of the road. And the issue with that is that, well, the road is not yours, it is for sharing. And we live in a country now where our roads are very, very congested. And so what we need to be doing is using as little amount of that capacity of the road as possible and being considerate of other road users. A common misconception that seems to have come up in this video, and of course it has, because you've got a young guy on camera telling people how to drive, or at least that's how it probably comes across. That's not what I'm trying to do. Obviously lots of people jump straight into the comments saying, well, you're an idiot for posting this because you're undertaking, which is illegal. Now, actually, undertaking is not illegal. It's not a law, it's not anything in the highway code that says it's illegal to do that. It's advised against, and if you're seen to be doing it recklessly, then you could be charged with reckless driving or driving without due care and attention or whatever they deem to see fit in that case. But essentially, if you're maneuvering in a way that is safer than the alternative, in this case, for me to pass the car in lane two would require me to slow down, reduce my speed as to not undertake him, then move out into lane two, potentially causing the person that was in lane two in my blind spot to slow down and the people behind me, and then get into lane three, speed up again, get past the traffic in lane two, back into lane two, check my blind spot again, back into lane one. Now, not only is that a far more complicated maneuver than just maintaining my speed and passing him, but I'm creating a whole many more opportunities there to have a collision. But the point being really that I shouldn't have to do that. If everyone, as you can see in this video, was using the lanes correctly, I mean, we could pretty much all be in lane one or lane two there, and that would leave lane three and four free, which is like a 50% of the road capacity would have been free, whereas here it looks like the road is completely congested. It's not, if we were all in the right place, it wouldn't be. What should really get a mention is that the whole idea really is that we've always got redundant capacity, yes, for more cars and busier times, but also people seem to forget emergency vehicles. The amount of times I've seen emergency vehicles with their blues on and actually not people only not noticing them, which I think again is a whole problem in itself is the awareness on the roads these days is not where it should be. But having lanes available if people were driving as they should be with the lanes is great for emergency vehicles. They can get to where they need to go and where they need to go presumably is important. They can get there much quicker. One thing that someone told me a little while back, which has always stuck with me, is that his whole mission when driving is to stay as far away from other people as possible. I think it's absolutely correct. Accidents only happen when cars come together. So that's an obvious point is that if you're further away from people, that's less likely to happen. But people do seem to generally be quite sheep-like. In fact, they all sort of pack together on the motorways. I think it comes down to not being particularly present. I mean, I do it all the time. When I'm driving, it's my thinking time. And I think lots of people are, are thinking about other things when they're driving. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think every once in a while, if a driver just checks themselves and said, hang on, I'm literally half a second from the back of this car here and I'm in the middle of the road and I don't really know what I'm doing, I think then people would be a little bit more spaced out. And that's a good thing. I mean, they say that you should be two seconds away from the car in front of you in the drive, but I think there is a little bit of a cultural issue in our country that I guess not only are we quite tuned out when we're driving, I don't think that's specific to the UK, 
But one thing I can say being a Brit is that we are quite a, I don't know if arrogant's the word or, but put it this way, if, if you were to overtake someone in, in this country, nine times out of 10, they become almost aggressive towards you as if you've personally wronged them by overtaking them or you've insulted them somehow saying that their car is inferior to yours just because you've passed them. And sometimes when you make a, a move on someone, if it's maybe a single track road and you overtake someone, they quite often become aggressive towards you. Maybe they'll flash their lights or they'll speed up. That happens all the time. And I think, although it's a very generalized statement, I think as a people on the roads, we do become and are quite sort of selfish and aggressive in this country. And of course that does not apply to everyone. So what can be done about this then? Well, there's probably a hundred thousand things that have been done and I'm not qualified to suggest any of them. But in my head, it does seem a little bit ridiculous that the motorway is not a part of our driving test at all in this country. At least last time I checked, it certainly wasn't. And it, it wasn't when I did so. In fact, you can't actually drive on a British motorway until you pass your test, which means throughout your lessons, you never experience the motorway. And if you're sort of driving on a provisional license with a parent or someone else in a car, you're not allowed to drive on the motorway until you have a full license. So for a lot of drivers, the first time they'll ever experience the motorway, they'll be a fairly new driver and they'll be on their own. There's Pass Plus and advanced driving courses that you can take whilst you're learning to drive and after you've passed your test that, that go into this and, and do teach you how to drive on motorways. But it's optional, it's quite expensive, and I would guarantee that the majority of drivers don't do that. I think that our infrastructure can be put to much better use. We have all of these big fancy gantries with screens now, certainly on the M25, largely on the M1, the M40, lots of the main arterial motorways around London in particular have these gantries. And I've seen it on the M3 quite a lot where they just put keep left unless overtaking on the gantry when there's nothing else being displayed. And when they do that, it is quite remarkable how much of a difference it makes. So I don't understand why it's not being done more. And I think, I think it just needs to be drilled into people a little bit better. I think the amount of speed cameras and the way that we're made to be really fearful of them is a problem in itself. I mean, it's a whole nother video where I could probably talk about that, but I know that certainly in the M25 where they have the variable speed limit and they're constantly changing that big red number on the gantry, it's really impossible to drive well and to stay away from other cars because people are constantly braking, accelerating, trying not to get a speeding ticket and rightly so, but I don't see how looking at your speedo and having to constantly adjust your speed on a fast moving road uh, with lots of lanes is particularly safe or, or useful. So. That's a whole nother topic really, speed cameras, but I don't think they're particularly helpful in terms of encouraging good driving habits. So let me know what you think. I wanna hear your opinions on this. I really want to emphasize that I'm trying so hard not to come across as elitist or patronizing or somehow knowing more than anyone else. I just really wanted to share my experience of lane hogging essentially, one small or fairly large issue with our roads that you see on a daily basis now. Have you noticed this? Is this something that winds you up as well? Is it something you've never even been aware of? Is it something that you've now realized that you actually do and will reconsider how you drive? Genuinely really interested to see how you guys receive this, this kind of video. Let me know if you found it interesting and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm gonna make some more sort of commentary videos like this about certain topics. So if you wanna see me talk about anything else, or you wanna send me a video to commentate on, let me know. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon.